Cool. So um, in the last lecture, we uh, we are mainly talking about the camera, a single camera, right? So we first introduced the difference, um, the different sensors, and then uh, we move to the um, camera geometry, and we we, we introduce a lot on the sorry on the camera geometry, which is the projection. Then, um, um, if you have a three D point, then uh, you know how to project it onto a two D image. And then we have a question about this as well in quiz one. And then um, after that, we introduced the calibration. So I didn't introduce them myself, but um, Maureen introduced that to you in the handout activities. And then we have that question as well. So why we have those two questions in the uh, in the uh, uh, and also in quiz one is because those two are quite important, are quite, quite important. So if uh, in the future, if you want to use your camera in your project, and the very first thing after you, after you buy a camera is to do a calibration, because if that camera, so most of the camera, they are fixed lens. So if the camera fixed lens, they're more or less the, uh, the, um, the uh, intrinsic parameters of the camera cannot change too much, and we can somehow assume the um, the, the camera intrinsic parameters as constant. So which means you need to do the calibration, right? And you know how to do it now. Then after you do the uh, calibration, you will have your focal lens, principal point, and more or less you will have the uh, uh, the, the the distortion parameters as well, but we, we are not introducing that much about the distortion. But if you are quite interested, uh, read the paper I mentioned in the um, um, uh, in the in the lecture, which is uh, from Pami, or you can read the uh, instructions or read the files about the uh, what have calibration toolbox, and they will introduce about the cap. The, uh, the distortion parameters, but I'm not. I don't want to introduce that too too much to make make it a bit confused. So after you do the camera calibration, you have focal lens and principal point. Then you can do the projection, right? Then uh, the second part, which is uh, in the um, in in the quiz one, is about the uh, geometry or projection. That is very very important as well because. If you want to use a camera and you want to do any any geometry related related information into your further method of control or something, then you need to know the relationship between a 3D point in the world and a 2D point on the image, which is the projection. Right? You need to know how to how to calculate those projections. Then you can use the information in your future work. So those two are super, super important. So make sure you know how to do it. All right, so suppose I'm having a question about the projection again in your quiz two or in your point exam, then you need to know how to do it. You definitely need to know how to do it. You may not use your camera in your future, but if you use it, you will know how important is it. All right. And in the hand activities, uh, we, uh, we've done the, uh, the camera television, television tour books, but we didn't introduce the convolution. So uh, that's first finish the uh, lecture two with convolution. So convolution is a very, very basic image processing technique. It's very basic, it's very simple, but it's quite easy. It's quite easy to apply to the image and to get some precise image with some information you would like to have, right? So um, the, uh, the convolution is just, the convolution is just a modify of the pixels based on some functions of its neighbor pixels. All right, so for example, if we have an image with some intensities like this, it's a three by three one, it's quite small one, just example. Then if we have a function, then based on those three by three pixels, we can have a center pixel with seven. And that's a change. 
right? And that is convolution. And this change is just a linear case. It's just a linear case. It replaces it replaces each pixel with a linear combination of its neighbors. It's only linear. It's not nonlinear. And um, and the function the function which presents this linear combination we call it kernel which is also a matrix as well. And I'm going to show you how, how this convolution works. All right, so for example, this is the same case. We have the original image, three by three like that, and, and we would like to have a uh, pixel with the value of seven here, and how we can do. And then here we use a kernel matrix which is still a three by three. And this convolution calculation is quite easy and simple. It's just a linear combination. So which means, suppose we have a, we have a three, three by three original image and we have this three by three kernel. We just multiply the elements from the corresponding, corresponding cells and sum them together. For example, in this case, we will have 10 times zero, five times zero, three times zero, four times zero, five times 0 0.5, plus one times zero, plus one times zero, plus one times one, and plus seven times 0 0.5, which and sum them together, it is seven. Sorry, wait a minute. All right, so, um, so this is the uh, process of the convolution. So you have an original image and you have a kernel matrix and it just apply a linear combination of the neighbors by the kernel. Then you have a modified pixel. Right, and the calculation is quite simple. It's just the um, the mo you need to multiply with the corresponding cells and sum them together. So in this case, ten times zero plus five times zero plus three times zero plus four times zero plus five times one five plus one times zero plus one times zero plus one times one plus seven. Point, uh, seven times point five, and then you have seven there. Then you have seven there. So the, this is convolution. It's quite simple. You just have an orange image and you have a kernel matrix. You can design a kernel matrix, then you have different functions and you have different image after this processing. All right, then. Wait a minute. Here is an example about the, uh, about the convolution. So this is the blurring. So you can use convolution to do some blurring. So on the top left, that is the original image. And then, and then if we apply a three by three kernel of that, then we have a uh, blurred image, which is something like that. But if we have a five by five kernel, to do the blurring, then you have a more blurred image like that. And then if we have a 15 by 15 one, then we have a much more blurred image like this. So the blurring is one of the example about um, what the, um, the convolution can do with different kernels. Then uh, here are some pre-designed pre -designed kernels which can do some purpose of the uh, image processing. Uh, you can find different kernels uh, from the website. For example, if you want to do a, um, a edge detection, then if we apply the kernel like this, and we will have the image like that. Right, then if we apply this edge detection kernel on the image, then we have something like this. So you can see, you can only find the, the, the edge the edge of the um, at the edges of the uh, of the image. Then, if we apply this kernel, then we have the image like that. So those three kernels are about the edge detection. 
Then we have a second kernel as well. So uh, if we apply this three by three kernel, then we have a uh, image which is uh, which is uh, which uh, is sharpened, right? And uh, we have other three uh, blur kernels which can blur the um, the, uh, the images into different levels, All right? So here is the uh, the website. If you want to um, have a look at different kernels, you can uh, you can visit that and have a look. And then you can play with the convolution by yourself. It's quite easy. And also, there's just one function uh, in MATLAB. Then, you, if you have a design kernel, you have or, or original image. Then uh, you have a changed, and you have a changed um, image, which has uh, which you have different purpose. All right. Then uh, you will have your activity. So, so suppose we have a four by four matrix, which is a small part of the image, and we have a uh, three by three three by three kernel like that and what we can get after and how we can do if we applying a smaller smaller kernel to a larger image which is the normal case in the uh, uh, normal case in the in the in, in the real application and what we can do is we know we know how to apply the kernel function with the same size, with is uh, with the image with the same size, right? Then what we can do with a larger size of image is you first apply this three by three kernel with the top left three by three, top left three by three. Then you have one value, right? And then you shift that window to the right. Then you have another three by three on the top right. And you're applying that three by three with this kernel as well to have another value, which is on the right as well. Then, if you are shaped the window down, then you have a three by three matrix on the bottom right, and you can apply that to the uh, uh, to the kernel matrix as well. And then you shift the window to the to the left. Then you have a you have a three by three matrix on the bottom left, then you can apply it to the three by three matrix. Then you have you have another value on that. So which means applying this three by three kernel onto a four by four image, you will have a two by two matrix. All right, so try to do it yourself. Try to do the calculation yourself. And after five minutes, let's uh, have a look at the answer together.
All right, so hope you have your answer already. Then uh, let's look at it together. Right, so uh, to apply this three by three kernel onto this four by four image, we first apply this three by three on the top left three by three, then you have the answer of 50. Then we move to the right to have the top right three by three, then it's minus 20. Then um, if we apply this on the bottom left one, bottom left three by three, then that is minus 200. Then if we apply on the um, bottom right one, then we have 50. All right, so can anyone tell me what happened after, after this um, convolution? What happened? So if you remember, if you remember, if you remember this for this three by three kernel is the edge detection kernel. And if we can see this image in the middle is 100 and 50 and 25. Again, 50 and 25. So that's, that's an edge, right? So that's an edge because of the, um, uh, the, uh, the gradient is on both these sides and that side. So that is an edge. And after we apply this kernel function, then we have another image which has enhanced enhanced gradient, right? So here is 20, uh, 200, 200, and tw minus 200, 200, and here is 50, 50. So it enhanced a lot on the gradient, then which means it's a edge detection. So make sure you know how to calculate this convolution by yourself. All right, so if you have any questions about convolution, ask me or ask Malin about that. All right, so that is mainly all for, uh, for the uh, lecture we left in, 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 the, in the last one. Then we move to lecture three. So in lecture three, it's mainly about RGBD, it's mainly about RGBD cameras, but it includes something else. All right, so in lecture two, we introduce cameras, which means we have a 2D camera, so we have a single camera which provides provide you a 2D image. And also, as I mentioned, the uh, 2D, uh, sorry, the uh, single camera cannot provide you the depth. That's the thing, right? And we mentioned some solutions in the first in the in the first lecture. For example, if we have single camera and move it, then um, you can have a uh, manually made it baseline. Or we can naturally make a stereo camera. So which means we have two cameras, then there is a baseline on it, then uh, you can get the depth. And also our VBD camera can also provide you the depth of the image as well. Um, I may not have time because, because we are doing hand activities mainly on our VBD camera. So I will uh, I will not introduce the stereo camera part, and I will left it into the next lecture, and then that's directly go to the RGBD camera. All right, so in the RGBD camera, in the lecture, we will intro briefly introduce the principle and also with um, different models, then uh, different models of the cameras that which you can use in your future project. And then um, uh, we will introduce some applications about RGB cameras. RGB cameras can do a lot of a lot of things because you you can both have the image and also the depth at the same time. So a lot of um, a lot of applications, especially in um, in computer vision and robotics, they switch single camera into RGB. All right, and in the hand activities, Malina will. Um, uh, we'll be with you not playing the real, um, the real RGBD cameras because we can't do that. We usually did that, but uh, we can't do that now. So you will have a pre-logged data. I think Malin will, uh, uh, will demo to you about the, uh, the, RGBD, uh, the RGBD camera and some data. Then uh, you will have a pre-logged RGBD data then uh, you can uh, do some image processing or display or something on the free log data. And that will be similar as what you can get from 
from the, the real camera. All right, then let's move to, let's skip the, uh, the stereo part and move to RGBD. All right, so um, the stereo camera has some issues. I will introduce it in the, in the, in the next lecture. But uh, that's why we have RGBD cameras. So in the RGBD camera, it normally provides you a normal RGB image and a depth image. So what is a depth image? Sorry, what, uh, here's a depth image. So what is depth, what's the depth image? The depth image is an image the intensity is, uh, sorry, the depth is encoded uh, as the intensity, as a grayscale. So which means, so which means uh, each of the pixel is a grayscale, but you can convert that grayscale to a depth of that, of that pixel. And also it can provide you a uh, infrared, infrared image as well. But I mean, the infrared is mainly, um, is mainly providing the depth image. Then, then uh, you can do lots of things, right? Because each of the pixel, you have the depth. Then you can convert each of the pixel with the depth image as a 3D point. Then you have a 3D point cloud. Then because each pixel, it's it corresponding to an RGB, which is a color, then you can display the point cloud. You can display the point cloud with color. So here is a demo about uh, what's the live, uh, what's the live uh, RGB and depth image you can provide, that you can get from the, uh, um, and from the, the RGBD camera. Now that is from a Kinect, Kinect one. As you can see, the left is a normal, is a normal RGB image and the right is the depth image, is the depth image. And combine them together, you can get something which is quite, quite interest, quite interested. All right, so uh, this is what we get. And the first, I should say, the first version, as I mentioned before, if you remember in the in the first lecture, the uh, the first version of the RGBD camera is called Swiss Ranger. It's, it's developed by ETH. Uh, if you if you know that, that's a very top university in the Europe. I think that's the, um, as I mentioned, Imperio is the, um, is the, um, um, is the MIT in, uh, in the UK and ETH is the MIT in Europe. It's a very, very good university uh, in uh, Switzerland. Then uh, they developed the first version of the RGBD camera. As you can see, it's a camera fly one. So you can see a lot of infrared sensors around the camera with a normal RGB camera. And then they did a very, very accurate calibration to, to link each of the pixel from the normal camera to the, uh, the range it finds from the infrared sensors. It's a time of flight one. So it sends the infrared, infrared light and receive the back and calculate the time difference to get the, 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 to get the, uh, the depth. And uh, I think you you remember about that camera, right? So that is used in the um, uh, in the um, uh, video serving video uh, done by Georgia Tech in uh, in uh, Electron One, right? So that is so we we do have this camera and that camera before 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 we have RGB cameras, and it's quite expensive. It's more than ten k. It's a couple of a couple of um, uh, ten thousand um, for this one. And then uh, this is what, what we can get. So that is pretty, pretty um, uh, impressed at that time because we can get the image RGB with steps together. So which means we can directly get point cloud with color. Then uh, we have the Kinect. Kinect is not, it's not initially designed for the computer vision and the, uh, the, the mechanics or robotics. It is designed for the uh, Xbox. Xbox. So that is for for the game for the gaming, but um, uh, we uh, they they open the SDK and then we can uh, use it as a normal sensor and the normal use. After that, it is really really commonly used. It's quite cheap. It's just a couple of hundreds, and then um, 
on the uh, Kinect, this is the first version of Kinect. As you can see, there are three sensors there. There's three sensors there. The sensor on the left is a um, is a projector. It's an infrared projector. You can't see it because it's, it's infrared, but it's a projector. It projects some patterns out. And then on the right, it is a infrared camera, which can capture the projected pattern, infrared pattern from the projector. And in the middle, it's the uh, camera. It's a normal RGB camera. It's a normal RGB camera. So those are the uh, the three cameras, three sensors together, which can provide you both the camera, both the image, RGB image, and depth image. And for the principle, principle is a bit simple, but I, I don't want to like explain it in very very detailed. So the uh, principle is structure like, but now there are some depth sensors they are using TensorFly as well. They said it's quite stable and more accuracy, but normally it is structure light. Normally it's structure light. And um, the principle is, uh, if you remember, there's a projector. The projector will project a pattern, an infrared pattern. You can't see it, but the infrared camera can see it. It's an infrared pattern. And the pattern on different objects with different depths will change the pattern differently. For example, a very simple pattern is if we project the line, a parallel the parallel lines out. And if there is an object on the table, and then you can see the lines will change, will not be a straight line together. So that is, a, that is, that is an example, but um, in, the, in the connect to the structure line, will, the pattern will be a bit um, complicated. But I mean, the principle is similar. You have a projector, it projects a, uh, a pattern onto the object. And because the, um, the shape or the depth will be different, then the pattern will change differently. Then the, the infrared camera will capture this changed pattern. And there are some, um, uh, there are pre previous knowledge about how it changed and how what's the, and what's the depth. And there's a relationship between the changes and the depth. And after we calculate on the changes on the, of the uh, pattern, then we can get, we can calculate the depth. It's quite a uh, quite good idea with the structural light, then we have dense depth to the image. All right, then um, because we have another camera, which is RGB, then another thing needs to do if we want to do the corresponding if you want to make the depths, which is corresponding to the uh, to the RGB pixel, which you need to do is you need to do a calibration, a very good calibration. Then each of the RGB pixel will corresponding to a depth pixel onto the depth, depth image. All right, then you have a depth and a corresponding a corresponding RGB. Then uh, because we have the depth image, as I said, the depth image can be, uh, can be uh, transformed into the point clouds, which means each pixel from the depths you can, and also from the intrinsic parameters, you can convert it, you can convert it into a 3D location. And then we have a point cloud. And also the point cloud can have some other uh, have some other character, character, uh, character, characters. For example, if we um, give the RGB, which the color of each of the pixel, we can have a point cloud with colors as what we have in the, uh, in the picture. So which means from a single view of the uh, RGB sensor, we can have this point cloud. It's quite impressive, right? Then, um, then I'd like to introduce, I'd like to introduce some different, some different sensors than um, uh, in, the, in the market that you can buy and you can use it in the, um, uh, you can use it in your future, uh, in your future projects if you have. So uh, different sensors will have different characters and different features. And I'm going to introduce it a little bit and based on the features, of each of the sensor, you will have a better idea 
about uh, which one you are going to choose and use in your project, right? So the first one, which is the very first version, that is the Microsoft Connect. And the uh, the the distance, the, the working distance is from 0.5 to uh, 4.5 meters. And the field of view, the field of, the normal field of view of the RGB sensor is quite narrow. It's not as um, as large as the RG, uh, as the normal uh, camera, RGB camera. So the vertical uh, field of view is only 43 degrees, and the horizontal what uh, field of view is uh, 57 degrees, and it can get uh, 30 frames per second. And for the resolution of the normal RGB camera is 640 by 480 by 480, but for the uh, depth for the depth image. The depth sensor, the depth image normally is uh, originally is uh, 320 by 240, but it can um, do the sampling, do the sampling to make it 640 by 480. But I mean, the uh, the, the normal, the, the original resolution is 3 320 by 240. And then we have Connect 2. Connect 2, the working distance, and here is a uh, and uh, uh, the comparison between uh, Connect 1 and Connect 2. So in Connect Two, it can be uh, it can be uh, HD and HD at thirty frames per second for the color image, and for the depth image, it can reach it can reach five twelve times uh, four twenty four, right? Which is much better than the previous one. And the working distance, the maximum one is maximum one is about eight meters, which is much much far away than before. Right, so if you have an application with a long, with a larger distance, then uh, the Connect Two may be a better choice. All right, and the uh, the field of view is much larger than before as well. So the vertical one changed from forty three to sixty, and the horizontal one changed from fifty seven to seventy degrees. Then uh, another one is the Asus Action Pro. So this is the one. This is actually the actually the one on the fetch robot. Uh, it's, it's it's not a very new one, but I mean that's the one. That's one of the common one which uh, we can use in the robotics as well, and um, that is the exactly the one we uh, we have on the fetch robot. All right. So the field of view is similar to is similar to the uh, uh, to the Connect one, and for the depth image. You have um, uh, two options. If you want 30 frames per second, it is 640 by 480, which is quite large. And if you want to have a more, sorry. And um, and if you have a, um, if you want to have a more uh, frequency case, then uh, you will have six foot, 620 by, uh, sorry, 320 by 240 at 60 frames per second. All right, so um, this is the, um, the Action Pro, Asus Action Pro, and also the distance is not that far. It can only be 0.8 meters to 3.5 meters. So if you want to, uh, if you have a project which has application with a shorter distance, then uh, it may be a better choice. And then the next one is a creative sense 3D. And the, um, the RGBD resolution is 720p. And the, um, the depth res resolution is not that high, it's 620 by 240. And field of view, field of view is, uh, field of view is a bit large. I used that before when I was in London. The only thing for this one is um, the range is quite short. The range is quite short. If you have a very short uh, range, and then uh, then it can you can use that. All right. Then uh, the next one. Let's go to some uh, some applications which the RGB camera can use. And this one is the very original application application of the uh, Kinect, which is skeleton checking. And then you, if you check the skeleton, then you can apply it into the games, right? And this is the skeleton checking. So, 
just show you how the leading colors work. So now purple. And now I'm red. We have this topic in the research before, but only only by two, I mean, a mono camera. But now, because we have depths, it's much much easier to do this scatter checking and much more accurate and robust, comparing to the one only using a single camera. So I just wanted to show you how cool it is. It even tracks the fingers. It's doing open and close. And it's doing point. So when I point, you can even see the shadow on the wall. See hit points. I can see my shadow on the wall. Number one, number one. And uh, this is really cool. So one of the things is that you can move the viewport and. Uh, okay, so this is one of the example. I don't want to keep it that long. So if you're interested, you can uh, you can watch it. Uh, you can watch it on the on the slides. Then um, another one is the 3D reconstruction. This is done by one of my uh, PhD students. I think you've seen that before. I can't really remember. I think you've seen it before. So this is the reconstruction of the kitchen on level nine, building 11, just next to our cast area. It is done by a handheld, handheld single, single RGB camera. And we can do this 3D reconstruction with very detailed texture because we have the uh, the uh, the punk cloud from the the punk cloud with color from both the uh, RGB image and depth image. And this is what we did. Uh, that student is pretty good. He graduated already, and he's now working as a uh, senior scientist, a research scientist at in Baidu, which is doing uh, doing self driving autonomous driving problems. And this is uh, what we converted into a, uh, into a mesh. So that is still the, uh, the kitchen, but we convert the pond cloud into mesh. All right, then uh, the next one, this one, this one is a larger area. This is the meeting room on level nine, building 11, just inside the cast area, just next to my, uh, next to my office. That's the meeting room. That's the three, 309, that's the uh, level nine, 309 meeting room. And we did, we did the 3D reconstruction with the, um, with the RGBD camera. And as you can see, the environment is um, punk cloud and also with colors. And you can see the chairs, the, um, the table, and also the, uh, the screen as well. All right, then let's move to the next one. The next one is similar, it's called Connect Fusion. It's quite, quite famous work, which again is doing a uh, reconstruction by only a handheld camera. But this one, the connect, the connect fusion only reconstruct the environment of a uh, small area. It's not an open area, so which means the camera will always focus on some of the uh, uh, some part of the object, but not like an open area like what we did for the uh, uh, for the kitchen and meeting room. Right. So as you can see, you can. Uh, Take a uh, connect, and then you can reconstruct the uh, the object when you move it. All right. 
right, so what else do we have? Yeah, so here's another applic sorry, here's another reconstruction case. Then uh, the next one, next one is, um, we call it dynamic fusion. It can fuse the scene, it can do the, in, uh, the, the reconstruction uh, in a much further case, which means the object can deform. Even the object can move, can deform, we can still do the reconstruction by using the RGB camera. So as you can see, the, uh, the phase changed, and then I can um, do the reconstruction as well. As you can see, the head moves, it can do the reconstruction as well. As you can see, it's, it's even it's a very large head move, then it can still do the reconstruction. Then uh, here is a waving hand. So you can see the hand moves, body moves, then uh, you can reconstruct it. It's all done by a single RGB camera. And this, this work is very famous as well. Then uh, let's do something else. Uh, yes, here's another one. The guy in the image is quite famous. He's called, uh, his name is Professor Data Fox, and he's, um, he's the director of the robotics lab in uh, University of Washington. He's a really, really famous guy. Yeah, it's not him, the other guy. This moving head is fine. And moving body as well. Squeezing toys. Yeah, he's the one. He's the uh, he's the famous guy. He's the other folks. Right, so this is the one, this is dynamic fusion, which can uh, fuse the uh, uh, fuse the, the RGBD image, images uh, in a dynamic case. Then uh, this is the one for a, uh, uh, this is the RGBD slam. So which means uh, you have RGBD camera, then we can do it, we can do a slam in, um, uh, this, this is the one uh, in the indoor area. As you can see, there's the corridor and the environment's quite large. And use the RGBD camera, you can do the slime, you can reconstruct the indoor environment with dense, with dense punk, punk cloud and also the RGB. Then you can see some, you can see, you can see some colors and also you can see some pictures on the uh, the map as well. Right, and you can see that's the result. All right, the next one is the real-time checking. The, this, this work is quite famous as well. Then uh, you can do the real-time checking quite robust and accurate by only using, by only using the RGBD camera. Previously, the checking is done by uh, using a single camera, but now we have RGBD camera as well. Then um, it makes things much more accurate. Uh, let me skip a little bit to the uh, example. Example. Yeah, here's the example. As you can see, here's the hand checking. It's hand checking. And the, um, on the top left is, the, uh, is the, uh, the depth image. And here is the checking result. And also checking the body as well. That's the depth image on the top left. And this is the checking result. And here is a checking. Here is a checking about the uh, 
the robot, the robot pose and motion. You can see here is the hand, here is the arm. And it's checking, it's checking the robot and to control it to do the grasping, uh, open, opening the, the books. You can check the books as well. All right, and here is another work about object recognition. So um, previously, we always do the object recognition, uh, or we call it pattern recognition by using a single camera, which is two of the images. Then uh, here, because we can use the uh, depth image as well, then it makes things much easier because, because you can directly get the shape of the object and it can easily segment it out from the background. So as you can see, so here's a point cloud we got from the, uh, uh, from the depth image. And then here is the, um, here is the object they want to, they want to uh, recognize. And here is the recognition, as you can see. So uh, um, I, we have a PhD which uh, he's working on this topic, and um, and he did a lot of the object recognition by using a single camera before. But after they after we have the RGB camera, they move everything to the RGB camera, and it works quite well and robust. All right. Right, so his, uh, this is everything for today. Before I move to, uh, before we move to hand activity with Marlene, I think, uh, we, uh, I think we have a question. Okay, so uh, solution we do. Uh, we will definitely have a uh, reflection with the solutions at the uh, beginning of um, next lecture. So at that time, I will definitely uh, talk about the, uh, talk about the, uh, the quiz one with the answers and also with some questions I find in your uh, uh, in your report. All right, so that's all for today's uh, lecture, and that's move to Malin about handout activities. Thanks a lot.